Hey everyone, what's up? I'm DJ Alex Brown and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at my two brand new Shed's 230 watt LED moving head spotlights. If you want the short, quick review, that is your Google review length. These are awesome lights. Buy them if you're thinking about it. In this video, I'm gonna go very in depth. For the people who are still watching the video at this point, we're gonna start out by looking at just tech specs. There will be a section of this video where I actually plug this into a DMX controller and go through all the functions of the light and talk about that. But I wanna begin just by talking about the actual lights themselves, the construction of the lights, the case, because I did buy the package that comes with a case and the pricing and stuff like that. Just about every tech spec for this light is posted somewhere on it. So here you see that it's a 230 watt LED. It also says LED on the side. It's a zoom in a spot. I'll talk about the zoom range in a minute and the specs on that. You have your typical uh, display down here with a four button control. I have reviewed another Shed's moving headlight that had somewhat of a similar display. To be honest, it's easier to use to me, my newer ADJ moving heads. On the back side here, you have a three pin DMX in and out, you have a power switch on and off, and then power con in and out. This is very similar to the last Shed's light that I did a review of. I do want to mention that Sheds did not send these to me. I had asked them to send them to me for a review and they basically said no. Uh, so I just bought these with my own money. I needed a new set of moving heads anyway for my light show. So uh, I decided to go with these and I'm very happy that I did. Now, if you saw my review of the other Sheds moving head, you might know that the problem I had with that one is that the fan was very loud. And my conclusion on that was I felt like that didn't really fit with the events that I do. Fans on these are almost silent. Uh, they're certainly not going to cause any interruption. Um, most people probably wouldn't even know that they were running. Now let's talk about the case for a minute here. Um, I did, I don't know if you can actually see this. Down. There's a Sheds logo on the side of the case and I just put a piece of three inch flat gaff tape over it. Um, cause I'm not much of a logo person, uh, technically speaking, you can get these customized with your own logo. Again, very hard to see, but there is a imprint that says sheds on the, uh, butterfly latch for the case. I mean, besides that stuff, it's a pretty standard road case. The only thing I will say, uh, the lights came in very quickly, a couple days, maybe a week. The case itself took about a month and a half to come in. So if you order a set, like, you will be waiting for the case. They didn't even give me tracking for the case. Another thing I want to mention, this is completely a shipping thing, but the case did have a little damage uh, just in the bottom and the, just a ding probably from being transported. And then also the casters on the case didn't line up perfectly with the threaded inserts. A little bit annoying to deal with, uh, trying to get those casters on. I think two of them lined up perfectly and two I had a little bit of trouble. So far in this case, the construction feels very nice. Um, and I can say that with two lights in it, it's still easy to lift. You can still reach your arms around it and pick it up by the handles. Another interesting note on the case, I actually have my two ADJ Busy Hex Wash 7s sitting in this case right now. And I did make a, a short about this on my channel, so they don't fit as perfectly as these lights do, but they do fit. The price of the case itself is fair. Um, one of the things I do like is there's a divider in the center for wires, clamps, uh, brackets, stuff like that, accessories, that on a lot of cheaper cases you won't find, like for example, the Pro-X case that's made for the ADJ Busy Hex Wash 7s, it does not include a center divider. Um, for clamps and stuff like that. I'm sure if you're a DJ, you get these email lists all the time of we're a Chinese light supplier, you know, here's our catalog. So for shits and giggles, I looked at a catalog and from what I can tell, the exact same light is on this catalog. I mean, it's the picture shows this light. 
Now, originally when I recorded this video, I said the prices weren't that different. However, they are. $320 versus $499 is fairly different prices. However, I think a couple of key things I'd mention that the reason the price is probably different is because US-based inventory bases instead of like Chinese coming from China, you know, you're going to be waiting longer for it. Um, obviously, there's lower overhead if the business is literally based in China and has no warehouses in the U.S. It also seems to be catalog only. You can't go order those on like their website or something. Uh, I'm sure they would probably send a PayPal link or something like that to actually make a payment. Um, so factor those things in. As we get to talking like tech specs and pricing, this is the set that I got. 1339 I think I paid like 1200 or something. So these lights, if you just buy the lights individually, they're about 500 a piece. With this light specifically, you're going to get more spot and the angle of the beam is fairly tight. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a beam moving head because to me, a beam is a little more washed out around the edges. It's not as crisp as a spot. Very bright. I mean, I turn these things down. Now, I'd rather have way too much power and have to turn them down, especially because I use the WMX1, which is very easy to do that. Um, but plenty of brightness coming out of these. It does have a color wheel and two gobo wheels. One gobo wheel seems to be replaceable gobos, but you would have to take the entire head of the light apart to do that. Um, and they are rotating gobos. Whereas the other gobo wheel is just static. Um, I actually had a bit of an argument about this with, and that's a, to a topic for another time, but one of the reasons I wanted to get this light is because it has, it has a six facet circular and a five facet linear prism. So basically you can either have it be in a line or in a circle. Um, linear prism was a big thing that I wanted, so that's one of the reasons I chose to get a set of these. It does have two DMX channel modes, 6 channel and 18 channel. If you know me, you know I'm using the 18 channel. Uh, however, if you want something a little simpler, which I probably wouldn't recommend for a light like this, you could use that 6 channel mode. The pan is 540 degrees, so from here all the way around, looks like 540 to me. And then the tilt is 220 degrees. So down to here and down to there. I'd say if anything, this might be closer to 240 degrees of tilt, um, but it definitely has some downward angle. Um, you know, I've hit about 15 feet away from this, uh, the floor with this light while having it on top of a totem. I actually did that at the New Year's Eve wedding that I just posted a gig log for. So. Um, if you're concerned about the other shed's light where it wouldn't go past like here, this one does go down. The lens optical system, mechanical focus, beam, zoom, angle. That's, that's what it says. Uh, 11 to 25 degrees. I would say 11 to 14 degrees. And it also heavily depends on the focus that you have the light set at because they're, you know, just two lenses. You have to focus and zoom. Uh, so the combination of those is what, you know, sets the light. Um, with the prism, yes, I believe that it's a 25 degree angle. Strobing looks great on these. Um, I have an actual gig video that I can drop in on this review, which is fairly rare that I have by the time that I do a review. flip the light down there are uh, it does come with hanging brackets it does come with a dmx wire in the box um and a power con cable of course but there are 
two brackets for mounting this light, which uh, I personally prefer on a light of this size. I feel like it's definitely more secure to have two clamps clamping this light down than one, especially with a light of this size. I would not be comfortable putting only one clamp on this, so I'm glad to see that it has two requires. Now, one thing I will say before we take a, a look at these on the DMX is they are a little bit heftier than uh, most lights. Just a little bit scary for me to put on a totem and I'm scared to drop them. Um, as far as lighting, to me, it does not make sense anymore to buy American manufacturers lights unless you're doing things that you really need them for. I would say to get a comparable light to this brightness and features wise, you're probably looking at least $1,500 per light from an American manufacturer. Um, you could find, I'd say the Focus Spot 2X, I think it is, is comparable to this, um, but I think that's a 100 watt LED. So, and that's about, I think an $800 to $1,000 light, somewhere in there. Um, there is a fair amount of metal in this. There is some plastic where you'd expect it around the sides here. Um, but honestly, I think there's more metal on this than there is on the ADJ Busy Hex Wash 7s that I got. So that is full open white, very bright. I'm not going to look at it because it looks like the sun is, but let's dive into some of the DMX channels here. If you can hear that fan running, uh, that's very well within an excusable limit to me. So I am at 50, which is about 20% brightness. Uh, and then let's take the shutter. We'll show you the strobe here. It actually has a very good strobe. That's one thing I've never really understood about some of ADJ's lights. So their strobe sucks. Like, because they combine pulse and strobe in, in one channel. Got your color wheel here. You can do split colors, although as you can see, personally, DJ clients aren't gonna care about what the color split looks like on a light. Um, they just care if, you know, the lights are fun. And so we can just go through some of the colors here. What's interesting is it's, color and then split color. It's not like a separate, whole separate range for splits. Okay, so let's go to magenta and then we'll go through some of the static gobos. And for this, I'm going to have to focus the light. Uh, there is a problem with the WMX where they only really have it set for the first gobo wheel, at least from the last time I used this profile and they refused to correct that. Uh, so you can't rotate these gobos because they're static gobo. Um, and I think these are actually built into the wheel, so I don't think you can change these ones. Now, you can actually see it on the camera. I can't actually see it to my eyes, but you can see how it's shaking because the outside is dimmer than the middle. There's a hot spot in the middle, um, which I think is actually pretty interesting. And then let's go to the fun gobos. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. So this is a glass gobo. I'm just gonna turn the color off for a sec. And then you have your shake, just how fast it shakes. And then you can scroll. Then we have gobo rotation. So these ones can be rotated. You can go slow, fast, backwards. Interesting. It doesn't seem like you can just stop at a specific position. So this is technically, I think, zoomed all the way in. And that's all the way out. And then we have our prisms. So we'll start with the six facet. Do you have prism rotation, which I'm just gonna add in quick. And I'm just gonna switch to the other prism. There's a little bit of a delay there. Again, pretty much each time you change prism settings and stuff, you're gonna need to adjust the zoom and the focus. This is about the tightest you can get this. So one of the reasons that I wanted to get this light specifically was for this six facet prism. Um, because if you, unfortunately, these circles are fairly large. I, I do wish I could make them smaller. I might even get a gobo to make them artificially smaller. Um, but on a more expensive light, you can make this look like laser. And I think I have a video of that somewhere I can show you. And then you also have your other settings. So pretty much auto modes, you almost don't even need DMX for this. You know, it's kind of funny that on a higher end moving head like this, it has auto modes. But at the same time, I feel like for a DJ, 
you want to have those auto modes, you know? Sometimes I just want to throw them in sound active from the DMX controller. Um, you know, sometimes that's just the best way to do it. Really never a problem with having the option there and just not using it either. So here's the display. You can see it was on channel 45. Set the DMX address, pretty easy. Just up, down, hit enter. Let's see how the sound active is. Seems to work pretty well to me. So let's go 18 channel. I think it's kind of interesting to have it as an operating mode. Uh, advanced setting. So these are your pan and tilt inversion settings. Display, if you want to make the display inverted, put it upside down. Annual control. Now this is a feature I actually really like. Um, if you can see it, basically I can adjust the pan, tilt, speed, dimmer. It's basically every DMX channel that I can manually set. So let's say if I was just setting this up for a production, let's say. So let's say I want to just pan it around. It does take a little bit. I'm going to tilt it up. It's going to take a little bit of time and the shutter. And let's just use whatever the first gobo we find is. Looks good enough for me. If I wanted to use a prism or anything like that, heck, let's use a prism. Why not? And there you have it. And this is what we have going on on the ceiling. So if you wanted to just manual set this, you could, um, which I think is cool. Now, what I want to see is if it goes back to that or if it clears it out. And so it appears uh, it does not save those manual settings. So just one thing to be careful about. If you plan on using that for an event and someone kicks a power cord out or something, it might cause a problem. Um, Personally, I probably would not let these go somewhere without someone on site to run them. But uh, I guess you got to do what you got to do and it's to each their own. So let's wrap this video up now. So final thoughts on these lights and this set. First of all, awesome lights. Very happy with this purchase. Very happy with the price that I paid for them as well as the case. Overall, just happy with everything, and um, I would consider buying these again if I need to expand these to another setup or something. If I haven't already mentioned it, considering buying just another case uh, to fit my Busy Hex Wash 7s, uh, just because it's a nice case. And personally, although I could probably save a couple bucks by buying a case that doesn't have a center divider, I'd rather have two of the same case because that makes it easier to stack them, uh, you know, to uh, load them in and out. Obviously, if you have two cases, you might need to label them. I would definitely recommend these to anyone looking for a set of good, affordable moving headlights for DJ. Uh, perfect for weddings, um, corporate events, even if you're a small production company. Uh, that's just kind of getting into lighting. These are an awesome option. You can buy a bunch of these on a shoestring budget, which I think is really important. I mentioned this in my last Sheds review video, but um, nowadays it's more important that you can have a lot of lights, especially in the production industry, than the cost of what your lights are. Um, especially if you're looking at up lights or something, obviously that's not what we're talking about in this video. Um, if you're a DJ, you probably want two really good moving heads. This fits that very well for like a, a truss tower setup. If you have a set of these lights or you're considering getting one, and have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. But if you're thinking about getting them, I would personally definitely purchase them. This is, thank you guys so much for watching. If you watched all the way to the end, please consider leaving a like on the video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel to see new videos when they come out. Um, I think I also have some like membership tiers or something you can use now, but honestly, I don't even know how to use them. So um, yeah, one of the things is like, if you're a member, you get to see the videos like a week before everybody else and stuff like that. But um, anyway, again, thank you so much for watching. That's gonna wrap this one up for now. Peace.